Okay, I'm <clears throat> going to work on figuring out this lamp here. I'm not too sure how it's actually... The lamp works, it's the... This is broken off, so... And on my 50, I, I never even noticed that the lamp wasn't working. So there's the end of it. So, the thing is, this is never going to really shine. It's never going to be as bright as it was, because it's cracked. I mean, but it looks like I can do the baking soda super glue fix on this. Likely, anyway. Because I don't think that is very tight in there. It doesn't appear to be. And I can always remove some material. Yeah. It's pretty loose. I got... There's a little bit of a gap there, so... I'm going to try to repair this with some baking soda super glue. I don't know. I don't know if that'll be good or not. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that. See how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to clean up a little bit of that because it's a little fat, but I think it should work. Got my f fingerprint on there somehow, so had to get the acetone out and I'll have to polish this up a little bit. But I think that's in pretty good shape. You know, I'll probably have to remove a little bit of material. I'm also looking at the the condition of this lamp. This thing is uh, seen better days. So I want to see. <clears throat> it's probably eight volts. I would. Imagine. I'm going to see what this neon lamp voltage is, and I think I'm going to replace it if I have uh, some lamps of this value. So I think this is. I'll plug it in. All the wires are tangled up. Okay, so let's move this to... Right. I have to lift this motor up. That's a horrible noise. saying 79 volts AC. That's not correct. <laughs> I do. This is not 80 volts going to that. So. And the problem is there's there's no service information on this. I think I've mentioned before. There's no service manual for the A. So yeah. So let me. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some more poking and prodding. I may have to flip this around to measure that, which is not a big deal, but. You don't need to watch me do that. I'll get this lamp figured out and see they're going to be this lamp or a new one. Well, maybe it is 79. This is a neon. I thought it was incandescent. This is a neon bulb or neon lamp. So, so it's going right back in there. It is going right back in there. And let's see. So this will go like so. And I don't want to accidentally turn this on. And I need to move this over just a little bit because this has to come up through the bottom. Let's see if that fits. Need to remove a little bit of that. So I'm gonna have to sand this down. It's just a little bit fat, so I should be able to get it in there though. So let me remove some of this material, and um, what I'll do is I'll come back after I've reinstalled the lamp, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so this is going to look ginormous because it is sitting on my base. My lazy Susan. 
but I repaired the um, that little indicator left the original neon bulb in there let's see how bright it is now see if it's better oh gotta plug it in first gotta plug it in first there we go all right um yeah, it's about what I would expect. Bright enough to see. Bright enough to see. Okay. Um, I did clean the plinth with, uh, or I wiped down, conditioned the plinth with some feed and wax. I have changed the stylus. I was using an M95 ED, but it's all distorted. I'm trying to go through a bunch of old carts. Uh, this has a new aftermarket stylus on it, but it was really, really bad. I'd have to look at the stylus under my microscope. Um, but it could be a bad cartridge too. I don't, there's no way of testing them. They come in with a bad stylus and you know, I just kind of go on faith that they're good. I think I've got like three M95 EDs. So I'll uh, throw that on a different, on a different table. A uh, little bit of tape residue on this. I need to clean this off as well. So what I did is I had an old Stanton 500 gray cartridge tracks between two and three grams perfect for this table because I still have just a little bit of pull even though anti-skate was disassembled demolished there's just a little tiny bit of pull you can't even really see it but I wanted to go with a cartridge that tracked a little bit heavier sounds great um, sounds really good so uh, I'll throw it on my or I'll throw my my hi-fi news alignment disc on it and um, <clears throat> just make sure that it's not crazy in terms of uh, tracking and sibilance and all that kind of stuff. So last thing to do on this is polish the dust cover, which you've seen that a hundred times. Well, not a hundred, but this dust cover isn't in horrible shape. It does need to be clean though. You can see some clouding here. So um, again, not bad shape at all. So I'm just gonna run this under the buffer real quick after I clean it. And, uh, you know, I, I will come back. I will come back and show you the cleanup dust cover just because, you know, that way you can see the before and the after. So here's the before. I'm going to keep this on the Lazy Susan. And then we'll look at the after here in a couple of minutes. Much, 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 much better. I've noticed the uh, Novus Fine does not like cooler temps. It tends to... Uh, want to stay on here a little bit longer than it should, but um, I did miss a couple of little spots when I cleaned it, so may do a second pass with it, I don't know. But I'm going to call the 50A good for now. Now, to recap, this is the one that came in with the uh, motor, motor mounts. I know you're watching the same video, I don't know why I'm recapping it, but Motor was flopping around all over, broken motor mount, spring was all crazy. Uh, no motor issues on this one. This one uh, ran well from the very first time I did it. So adjusted the speed, got a new belt, fixed the, um, the overhang gauge, that little lamp down there. Um, put a new head shell on it. Um, ready to go. Uh, just cleaned up the anti-skate because I, I, there's... I'm not going to worry about fixing that. I, Anti-skate is... Here, I'll explain to you. So I have actually used my Hi-Fi um, uh, alignment disc and some turntables you you manipulate Anti-skate and you hear a difference and other ones you don't. Lots of variables in there. What I'm getting at is sometimes Anti-skate um, and adjusting it based on the cart that you have and the turntable you have in your setup may not do anything. Right, an older table like this, um, I don't know that I would, you know, it's not audiophile quality. Now this were a 41 maybe, but 41s didn't even have anti-skate. So, you know, how do you explain that? So anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. I just gouged my knuckle on that thing. So as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.